Let's talk a little bit about work and energy. In this example, I've got a rock sitting at the bottom of the cliff. I'm going to use my muscles to lift that rock up and put it at the top of the cliff. So now the rock is sitting at the top of the cliff and I'm going to give it a little push and it's going to fall off the top of the cliff and it's going to fall toward the ground. And as it falls, it's going to move faster and faster and faster until it hits the ground and eventually comes to rest. So let's think about this cycle for a little bit. As that rock fell, it had energy of motion. We call that kinetic energy. We use a K for kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. 1 half times the mass times the square of the velocity. Kinetic energy, energy of motion, anything that's moving will have kinetic energy due to its motion. But in the previous case, when the rock was sitting at the top of the cliff, it didn't have kinetic energy. So where did that kinetic energy come from? Well, it had something called gravitational potential energy. We use a capital U for potential energy. And that's equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of gravity times the height, mgh. So our object started out with gravitational potential energy, and as it fell, it lost some of its gravitational potential energy, and it gained kinetic energy. But how did it get gravitational potential energy? Well, I did some work on the rock by lifting it up. And that's how we transfer energy from one object to another. So I had some energy stored in my body, some kind of chemical energy from the food that I ate. I had some chemical energy stored in my body, and I could use that to use my muscles to lift the rock up. So I did work on the rock. It started out as chemical energy stored in my muscles and my body, and it ended up as gravitational potential energy of the rock. And how did it go from one to the other? Because I did some work on the rock, changing its energy. And then when I gave it that little push, that gravitational potential energy became energy of motion, kinetic energy, because the force of gravity was doing work on the rock. In the first case, I did work on the rock. Now, gravity is doing work on the rock. And why does it end up at rest? What happens to all this energy that the rock had right before it hit the ground? Well, if you've ever tried to hammer a nail and you've hit it a bunch of times with a hammer, and then you touch the nail, it's hot, isn't it? It warms up. The same thing happens here. When the rock hits the ground, there's some internal friction with the ground, and the rock tries to press into the ground, and the internal friction there, and the ground heats up a little bit. So this kinetic energy becomes thermal energy. We use a Q oftentimes in physics for thermal energy or heat. So we went from chemical energy stored in my body. What other kinds of chemical energy can you think of? Batteries store energy in a chemical reaction, right? And as that chemical reaction takes place, we can get energy out of the battery. Gasoline stores energy in the chemical bonds. We can burn gasoline and get energy out. Gunpowder, lots of things store energy in a chemical fashion. And that energy was converted into gravitational potential energy. That's the energy an object has by virtue of its location in a gravitational field. So the higher up we lift something, 
the more gravitational potential energy it has because the bigger distance it has to fall and that means the force of gravity can work on it over a greater distance and do more work on the object. Energy of motion is our kinetic energy and when that object hits the ground the ground heats up a little bit and that energy of motion is converted into heat. The same thing happens in most cars. When you're driving down the street, your car has lots of kinetic energy. And when you hit the brakes in most standard cars, unless you have an electric car or a hybrid car that has what's called regenerative braking. If you have normal brakes on your car, brake pads squeeze a drum and all that energy of motion of your car is converted into heat and you end up heating up the air around your car. All that energy is wasted and then when the light turns green you have to get your car moving again and that takes a lot of energy. With regenerative braking systems which you'll learn about in Physics 4b, part of that energy of motion gets stored. It's as you slow the car down you use that energy to charge a battery and then that energy is stored and you can get that out of the battery when you get the car moving again after the light turns green. Let's talk a little bit more about work. Here I have a box sitting on the ground and I'm going to push on it. I'll give it a push and the box is going to slide to the right some distance and it's going to end up over here. So my push caused the box to move to the right by a distance delta x. So in simplest terms, if my force is constant and it's in the same direction that the box moves, I can calculate the work I do on the box. The work is equal to my force multiplied by the displacement. Force times distance is the work done. Now, of course, the force doesn't have to point in the same direction as the motion. I could push with a force directed this way, and the box would still slide the same way across the floor. If that's the case, then this formula doesn't work, and we'll deal with forces that point in different directions very soon. But for now, let's just concentrate on forces that point in the same direction that their object is moving and where the force is constant across that entire motion. If you get in the habit of always saying the work done by some force, in this case it's me pushing on the box, on the object, in this case it's the box, right, is whatever it is. You always get in the habit of saying that. The work done by gravity on the box. The work done by my pushing force on the box. The work done by friction on the box. If you always get in the habit of saying that, it's quite helpful because something is doing work on something else. And that object's energy must be changing. If work is being done on the object and work tells us about energy transfer, then that object must be changing energy.